Hello everyone. I welcome you to the CEC lecture series. I am Nupur Chawla, teaching English literature at Maitri College, Delhi University. And today's lecture is part of the ongoing series in which we are discussing about English drama. And today's lecture is titled Jean Paul Sartre No Exit 1944. So the play that we have taken up for discussion today is a 20th century play written by Jean Paul Sartre. Now you might wonder that you know looking at the name of the playwright that he appears to be French and which is true uh then how does it fall into the category of english drama so because uh, we are uh, you know uh, approaching this text or this uh, play in translation in translation into english language so hence we are uh, you know taking up this uh, play for discussion today because um, also you know it forms a very very important moment in the uh, english drama um whenever we uh, talk about this genre right so it's not just so whenever we talk about english drama it's not just uh, you know drama which is written by um uh, people or playwrights that were uh, english uh, by origin right or that were um, living in england but even that drama which is translated into the language can broadly be discussed under this um category so uh, if we look at the uh, a bit about the playwright I'm sure um, to all the literature students, um, this name must be familiar. So uh, Jean Paul Sartre was uh, born in 1905 and was around till 1980. So we see that uh, you know he was uh, he's a very important figure in the 20th century. Uh, he was a French playwright, a novelist, a critic, and also a a very key figure in the existential philosophy. and whenever we think of sartre it almost automatically at the same time brings to mind the idea of existentialism right but of course we will talk about this still uh, at length as we go along in today's lecture but if we um, you, know, you know look at the uh, background of this playwright he was um, and you know and we just to understand that where he's coming from and what kind of sensibilities uh, can we associate uh, with this playwright so uh, he was actually awarded um, you know a nobel prize in literature in 1964 but there's also a story to it you know he kept refusing to accept the award but uh, still the honor was conferred upon him now uh, we've heard of uh, you know playwrights and artists uh, writers uh, refusing so to say awards uh, what's the reason behind that uh a lot of times the reason is ideological right where they say that uh, they do not require such institutional uh, uh you know uh, i would say recognition right so for them it's the work which is more important than these uh, than the recognition so in fact uh, he said something very particular here and i would like to quote that he said that a writer should not allow himself to be turned into an institution unquote so which means what that you know we understand that how sartre then was a very genuine playwright in that sense so he was not uh, one who was writing for awards or he was not a person who was writing to uh, you know maybe uh, gather as much audience for his works as he could so he was in that sense not a uh, uh, you know uh, i would say uh, a playwright that was uh, doing it more for profession but he was a playwright that was driven by a uh, very strong ideological motives as well so there was a reason why he was writing so whatever that he wrote was actually deeply felt and his writings would then convey a uh, very strongly felt convictions about uh, different issues right so that's something which we need to keep in mind uh, about this playwright that how he was ideologically quite strong in that sense and um, uh, you know would not really care about um, so to say these recognitions right now uh, we also see that you know sartre was uh, now if you look at the dates that he was around 1905 to 1980 so the foremost thing that um, that we would notice is that he was around at the time uh, when the two world wars took place right the first world war as well as the second world war so we right away understand that these two massive um the consequential world events would definitely inform 
the sensibilities of this playwright and also what he captures in his um, you know writings then in fact he was also taken into the french army during the second world war so it's not that he was just a, you know like a detached observer but he was in the middle of thick of things so he was part of the french army during the second world war and in fact he was also taken prisoner of war for 9 months in 1940 right so he spent time in a different country as a prisoner of war now what he did there was and in fact this experience uh, made him start to write so in fact this is where he wrote his first work um, of his life and this is also the period when he read martin heidegger's uh, seminal text uh, being and time which was written in 1927 now you see this text actually um, really really uh, uh, becomes formative for uh, sartre's uh, philosophy his thought and uh, is one of the uh, you know uh, 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 very important influences of the playwright so he wrote he read around the time when he was taken a prisoner of war right and uh, he ultimately then escaped imprisonment on the pretext of health issues um, as you can see on your screen uh, there are these two uh, you know playwrights that we have been so uh, these two personalities that we have been talking about first is on your uh, on the right is uh, jean paul sartre um, and uh, we also see on screen uh, martin heidegger so heidegger was uh, actually a german philosopher who had uh, you know inspired sartre and sartre was reading his works uh, very very carefully and it also somewhere uh, you know kind of um, yeah, influenced his thought as well now you see after coming back to paris uh, from uh, you know his confinement in uh, um, in the um, uh, in the country where he was taken a prisoner uh, he came back in 1941 and that's where he participated in the founding of this group which was called socialism and liberty now you see this group was um kind of radical it was rethinking a lot of uh, you know uh, ideological um, uh, values uh, 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 ideological uh, givens of the time it uh, was uh, posing important questions which needed to be posed at a time when the entire world had gone to war so socialism and liberty then was uh, was a group that sartre was uh, associated with uh, now the others uh, who were also part of the same group were simon de beauvoir now i'm sure that you would have heard of uh, simon de beauvoir she is uh, one of the most celebrated feminists french feminist uh, uh, writers then we had now uh, morris uh, marlop then we had jean uh, toisson we also had a uh, dominique de santi we had uh, ecole normale all these were the thinkers that were part of this group socialism and liberty in 1941 uh, so what they were doing was that they were as i just now said you know um, rethinking whatever was going on around and they were also you know um, thinking of uh, uh, they were uh, they uh, they wanted to uh, question uh the uh, uh you know in a in fact in a radical way the uh, the brutality of war and also the entire uh, uh you know uh, ideology of fascism as well which uh, which uh, came into being uh, during the second world war right but then uh, we noticed that uh, you know sartre and bouvard were somewhat disappointed because they found it difficult to gather support right so disappointed with the difficulty of gathering support sartre decided to quit active resistance and actually started writing very seriously so as part of this group he uh, the uh, the motive was to resist but then uh, you know he uh, eventually changed his stance and thought of uh, you know expressing his ideas not directly or on the street but instead expressing his ideas uh conveying uh, the point that he wanted to convey through literature so we see that how politically charged the background of this playwright then is right and uh so then once we see that you know this uh, this kind of a transition which comes in sartre that is from uh you know a time when um, he wanted to be an active uh, uh, uh you know participant in resistance uh, to certain social forces so transition from that moment to focusing his energy on literature 
this is a very seminal thing for us to understand when we are approaching Sartre, right? So, as this transition happened, what were the texts that he wrote? It's very important for us to, uh, you know, pay very close attention to that as well. So, three texts come to mind around this time when this shift in stance came uh, in Sartre's um, uh, life. So, the first such text that he wrote after this moment was Being and Nothingness. And this is something which is, uh, you know, this is a text which is very, very popularly associated with uh, Sartre. And um, I'm sure that you're able to also connect that, uh, you know, the, the, the title of this work uh, seems to be influenced by Martin Heidegger's Being and Time. So this text uh, by, by, by um, uh, Heidegger that he read during confinement uh, somehow inspired him to write this book. So now Being in Nothingness was a 1943, uh, uh, so th this was a book written in 1943 uh, by the philosopher uh, Jean-Paul Sartre and here Sartre develops a philosophical thought uh, supporting existentialism, right? So one can say that this was kind of a laying the ground for uh, his philosophy of existentialism. So in this work, topics such as consciousness, the existence of nothingness, psychoanalysis and also the question were of uh, free will were explored, right? And also uh, one must note that this very popular phrase which is, uh, you know, uh, ascribed to Sartre that is existence precedes essence is a, te uh, is a phrase which comes from this work itself. Now this phrase existence precedes essence is a very, very important, I would say, characteristic phrase, not just of uh, Sartre, the playwright or the thinker, but it's also characteristic of this cultural movement that is existentialism. So, what does it mean? Existence precedes essence. First, you exist and then, the re and then you acquire the essence or the basic, um, you know, uh, features which define an individual. So, before even acquiring, uh, a, a, you know, a, a kind of an identity, before even acquiring that very central thing which is a defining feature to an individual, Sartre would say, let's first think of the fact of existence of that individual and then talk about the essence of anyone, right? So, this becomes, um, you know, uh, one of the very important phrases that comes through from this 1943 text by Sartre. The other text uh, written around the same time uh, was the play The Flies. Uh, it was produced in 1943. It's an adaptation of the Electra myth. Now, what's the Electra myth? It is, uh, you know, from uh, the Greek mythology, right? Now, the play The Flies actually recounts the story of Orestes and his sister Electra in their quest to avenge the deaths of their father Agamemnon, who was the king of Argos. So, if somebody who is familiar with a bit of Greek literature, these characters would be familiar to you, Electra, Orestes and Agamemnon. So, this uh, play was actually, uh, you know, an adaptation of that Greek myth in 1943 by Jean-Paul Sartre. And the third text, which I said, uh, was written again around the same time and uh, uh, is, uh, is uh, another very, very important uh, contribution by Sartre. It is the play No Exit and that was written in 1944 and this is what we are going to discuss today as well. So, it's an existential play which Sartre wrote in 1944 at a time when he had made this decisive uh, uh, choice of, uh, you know, transitioning from active resistance to writing literature. So, this moment is quite important, is uh, quite fundamental for us to appreciate what Sartre would be doing at this point of time. Now, you see, the other thing which we also need to pay attention to over here is the fact that his uh, uh, philosophy uh, uh, of uh, existentialism, right, that, that entire uh, gamut of ideas also uh, somewhat solidified around the same time. So, when this play was written, No Exit, this is the time when that philosophy was also, uh, you know, uh, somewhat uh, introduced and it uh, solidified. So, it was bound to have 
a decisive impact on what the playwright would say through this piece of work right now i'm sure uh, uh, you know by now you must be sufficiently curious to know what do we mean by existentialism because this word has occurred so many times and i'm sure you might have also come across this word uh, even before um and uh, uh, you know what what does it exactly mean so let's very quickly take a look at that next now existentialism is actually a cultural movement that flourished in europe in the 1940s and 50s so this is actually a part of uh, you know a development which took place after the uh, second world war or around the time when war was when uh, when, when second world war was still um, uh, you know uh, being fought now uh, the major philosophers identified as existentialists and many of whom for example camus and heidegger they even repudiated this term that they did not want to use this term but yet in practice they were kind of you know following the uh, principles of this movement uh, so uh, some of those um, uh, philosophers who did identify as existentialists were karl jaspers martin heidegger and martin buber in germany among various others um, you know in europe um, it's also important for us to understand that you know existentialism was uh, um, somewhat influenced by so even as it uh, uh, in itself is a 20th century cultural phenomenon but it was influenced by the 19th century philosophers soren kierkegaard and frederick nietzsche now i'm sure that we all have heard of nietzsche we all have uh, uh, heard of uh, kierkegaard as well both of these thinkers or philosophers were quite seminal uh, you know uh, in uh, laying the ground for uh, this movement which was to um, you know flourish in the 20th century okay now we also see that uh, you know existentialism then was uh, as much uh, a literary phenomenon as it was a philosophical one so while it did bring to the fore uh you know or 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 it did kind of solidify a philosophical stance uh but then at the same time it was as much a literary phenomenon now when i say that it was a literary phenomenon what do i mean by that it means that it was a defining uh, uh you know school of thought that also impacted a certain kind of works that were written around that time yeah so we can use this as a framework as a prism to read a lot of texts that were written around this time in history right now in fact uh, sartre's own ideas were and in fact are better known through his fictional works uh, nausea and no exit right so both these uh, works uh, you know kind of talk about existentialism and uh, his idea of what existentialism is was uh, quite um, evident in uh, these two works and of course we will also see uh, when we come to the discussion of the play no exit today that uh, how does existentialism you know pan out or uh, get represented over there so apart from these fictional works and uh, uh, his philosophical work which was being and nothingness and also the other work titled uh, critique of dialectical reason both these also contributed to the development of this um phenomenon that we call uh, uh, existentialism right so we see that uh, this was not just a philosophical doctrine alone but it had a very decisive influence and presence in literature as well uh, apart from sartre we had dostoevsky ibsen and kafka who were also uh, you know associated with this movement in paris there were jean genet another very popular playwright andre gide and then we had andre morrock and also the expatriate samuel beckett now very popular play by samuel beckett waiting for goro is exactly about uh, uh, existentialism right and even for that matter the romanian french uh, playwright eugene inesco was also associated with this movement so we see that you know uh, some of the very important figures of 20th century literature then are associated or were actually influenced by this uh, school of thought now now that we have talked about you know what are the playwrights uh, that are associated with this movement and how it's not just a philosophical one but it's as much literary 
um, it is fit uh, it is uh, befitting that we uh, you know kind of now understand that what exactly is existentialism right if somebody were to ask you what is it there are some points which we need to keep in mind in order to sufficiently define this phenomenon the first thing that we say is that existence is always particular and individual that's the first characteristic idea of existentialism so anyone who is an existentialist will believe in or will have uh, uh, will have faith in this uh, in this fact that existence is always particular and individual so they will not think about people in communities they will not think about people in groups but instead the idea of existence will be mulled over with respect to individual entities with respect to particular uh, people right so existence is not that abstract broad blanket phenomenon that can be talked about uh, you know um, uh, with reference to larger groups or sections of society no it is that reality which has to be examined understood uh, explored at the level at the individual level so that's what the first thing is that existence according to the school of thought is always particular and individual okay and the second thing is that existence is primarily the problem of existence so you see when they think about the idea of existence they are essentially grappling with the problem of existence okay now what do we mean by problem of, of a problem of existence so they are actually uh, you know going into um, the aspects of possibilities they are going into uh, what are the issues that uh, you know come to the fore what are the uh, what are the uh, uh, you know unresolved uh, aspects of uh, existence uh, with a we human life all these things are explored uh, you know by the existentialists and in fact uh, one also says that uh, you know uh, when we say that exist uh, that that existence is primarily the problem of existence over here the thrust also remains that there is an investigation of the meaning of being right so when they say that uh, there is an investigation of the meaning of being being meaning that the existence of i mean the idea that a person exists or the person is so that investigation form the center of this uh, school of thought right uh, the other uh, uh, you know two ideas associated with this uh, movement is that you know that that investigation into being is continually faced with diverse possibilities so being as constituted by multiple possibilities and those possibilities are constituted by the individual's relationships with things and other people right how an individual relationship uh, uh, operate how does he interact with those around uh, and also with other entities around so these would be the parameters around which the question of being and existence would be examined and also lastly existence is always a being in the world that is it is a concrete and a historically determinate situation that limits or conditions choices this is a very important thing about existentialism that it is not an abstract philosophy it thinks about existence and being in concrete material world in terms of being in the world as they say right and a being which is uh, determined by history which is determined by the choices that human beings make right so these four things come to define existentialism uh, essentially first that it's always uh, particular and an individual second uh, it goes into the problem of existence in, uh, into investigating the meaning of being what what does it mean to be third this investigation is done in a particular framework what framework that is exploring the possibilities which are uh, which come alive when you view an individual and his relationship with other things and people around right and fourth that existence that that existence over here then is a matter of materiality it's not an abstract 
uh, you know, uh, uh, a reality, but it is always a being in the world, right? It's always discussed vis-a-vis this world. And it's also discussed in terms of the actual choices which individuals make and also how history determines existence, right? So these four things come to define existentialism per se. So in this lecture, we have looked at two things. First, we've looked at the background of Jean-Paul Sartre as a playwright. And secondly, we've looked at length what exactly do we mean by existentialism and what are the key features of this movement. In the next part of the lecture, we are going to focus particularly on the text No Exit and how it is a play associated with this movement. Thank you.